try to complete the two times on the X. that out. Yeah, I got pre-show on there. All right. in just a bit. All right, so for a good minute, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over. Hi, Nightfall. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, not viewer account. Hey, Taylor Brony, I am doing okay. There we go, window projector, and, okay, so that's the alert box. Still setting some things up. All right, so, uh, rolled in, say hello everyone, a little late for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it was at a later time, like, late time on this one. Not the end of the world, you know. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm, I can do a, a late night stream. You know, it's better than having no stream at all. I mean, I skipped like another week of, you know, not doing much of anything. Oh, hi, boys. How are you doing? I mean, it is Friday night, and you know, Friday nights are where people, you know, they like to. I wouldn't say party, but, you know, just have fun doing, you know, crazy shit. I don't think it made sense right there. And I just realized I forgot to put in, uh, where is it? I'm a little unprepared. But, you know, that's always fixable. All right. So, no, 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 no. <clears throat> See, I'm okay. Almost through editing the Daring, Daring Dunce review. <laughs> Daring Dunce? Are you talking about uh, Daring Doubt? Because I thought that episode was very anticlimactic. And there's also, like, so many questions, or at least one major question about Al Hizoto. Like, for those who haven't seen the episode, I'm sorry if I gave out any spoilers, but it was it was pretty stupid. A lot of the Daring Do based episodes have gotten like dumber over the years. So I do like Daring Don't though. That was an okay episode. It's more than anticlimax. Oh boy, I can already tell that uh voice has quite a lot of things to say. <laughs> Let's see. Thoughts about the horseshoe in. If you watch the what was that episode? Oh, yeah, that's the one where um, Starlight was uh, trying to take the... Okay, so th th my biggest issue with that episode is just fucking Trixie. Like, I used to tolerate Trixie in the past. Like, st she did some stupid things, but then she started to do the whole winking thing, constantly, like, s cramming in the throats of the audience saying, Hey, look, I'm trying to get the job for Starlight. And it's just, oh, my God, dude, just... Stop showing off. We get it. Stop. Like, ugh. Mm, that's probably... Well, okay, there have been other occasions where uh, Trixie got on my nerves. But, God damn. 
Like, that episode was probably, like, her most obnoxious thus far. Like, she does get what she deserves uh, near the end when fucking Starlight tells her off. And on the news, water is wet. Oh, we... Voice, I already know about your thoughts on All Bottled Up. Good God, you fucking blew my eardrums out the last time you talked about it on a stream. Let's see, thoughts on Dragon Dropped. I kind of liked it. Um... The thing about Dragon Drop is that it kind of reestablishes that the connections between Rarity and Spike are more platonic, which I'm fine with. It, But, like, half the time, whenever it comes to the whole Sparity thing, it seems like the writers are not deciding. Like, with Meltdown, I saw them as platonic, and same thing with Dragon Drop. But then in the best gift ever, it goes back to Spike having a crush. It's like, can you please make up your goddamn mind? So, yeah, um... That's that's really just one complaint, you know. It's very indecisive on where they go with the whole Sparity thing. But the fact that Spike is spending time with Gabby, I actually like that idea because I'm gonna be honest. The things of how the way Rarity treats Spike sometimes is very questionable. Recipes fill uh fill us beginning of the episode, end of episode. Oh yeah, the plant that was actually funny. That was the most hilarious way to end the episode. Phyllis, no! My little pony! Like, <laughs> like, I cracked up when I saw that. I was like, wow, that's it? So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, back to Dragon Dropped. I like that they're trying to reestablish that Spike is being a little more open to um, to other people, uh, other, you know, friends to be around with. Like, I like the moments that he was having with uh, Gabby. Although the whole, like, cherry eating thing can have so many implications. Um, but I, I, like, it's not a great episode, but I think it's decent at most. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on Dragon Dropped. Horseshoe in, I just, I just really fucking hated Trixie. Daring Doubt was really stupid. Dragon Drop, uh, refers to Spice Balls. <laughs> Good, Minoti. Oh, that's funny. Uh, what would Gabby and Spike's ship name be? I think I had a conversation like that before, and I have no goddamn clue on what to make of it. I'm going to drop out of the stream. I'm starting to get tired. All right. Go to sleep then, Nightfall. Spabby? That sounds like a terrible spaghetti product. Gabike? Scabby? Ouch! Scabby sounds like a fan fiction name for a Scooby-Doo story. See, honestly, showing Rarity being jealous of Gabby was super funny. Rarity, like, there are times when she's funny when she's over the top, you know, like in season two. Like, um, like let's say uh, Ponyville Confidential, when she's like, I'll destroy her. <coughs> that was funny. Um, but nowadays, her trying to just overtly apologize, it's like, Rarity, you don't need to make it that big of a deal. And it kind of just, like, it, it threw me off for a bit. Let's see, yeah. Uh, Gabike sounds like a Pokemon. Let's see, uh, Scabby the Scabby. Hello, Scabby. Golden! Hi, uh, Riley. <laughs> uh, Trying to scare me with your little Joker thing right there? I mean, you maybe, uh... Yeah, you failed so bad doing that. <laughs> Don't tell me to go to bed, go to bed, Goldie. You're not my dad. All right, I'm going to go poof and go fuck. Nightfall, go to go bed. To fuck to sleep. It's <laughs> <laughs> sounded more like Pennywise than Joker. Hello, Georgie. Hello, Georgie. <laughs> Down here in the sewer line, we've got cotton candy, hot dogs, and you like popcorn? You like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, we never did the podcast about it. Chapter two. I'm just realizing. Or, oh yeah, I no, I'm still, I'm still saving that because I know that at one point Bliss wants to join the podcast, and she also loved the It movie. Yeah, I, I liked what they changed in it. Honestly, see, if already played in your eyes, the apology would have worked. Then some. Then some. That I don't know. 
So some of the chat people are asking me about the recent episodes. Like, I'm still avoiding, you know, the the episodes that got aired in other countries. I can't call them leaked. Yeah, I can't call them leaked episodes because it's not leaked. The other countries aired them. It's like, why did they even air it so early? Couldn't they just wait for the U.S. release? I mean, it's the series finale. I know. It, it, it's... It's... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, don't spoil the finale, folks. I waited until the U.S. release. You spoil, you die. Yeah, only recent episodes released in the USA. Yeah, no, um... <laughs> I love the voice. It's like, shrugs, like, I don't know. <laughs> See, I watched the endings. They're a thing that happened and had ponies in it. Yeah, nope, that, that's the best way to describe it, Odie. You mean MLP has ponies in it? Oh, well, gasp! My, my, my whole world has come crashing down around me. I need a new show to get obsessed with. Oh, you know what? Like, I have to catch up on it, but I've recently, I finally started watching the recent DuckTales show. Oh, finally, man. It's so good. Oh, God. Like, no, like, the clever, like, there hasn't been a single episode that I hated or got irritated. Like, each episode has just a clever sense of humor. Oh, I know, right? It like, just... okay, so the, the latest episode I saw is when they're tr uh, they're trying to hike up the mountain, and they keep going around in circles, supposedly, with this weird demon head, and then they find out, oh, there's a there's a wormhole, so that explains so much. And it's so hilarious <laughs> at how it ends. Like, uh, one of the, uh, the, the I, I keep forgetting the, the three nephews but one of them is like drawn out of math do it yeah. Louis. yeah and then it flies up and then goes to a wormhole and it's at the top of the fucking mountain that they were trying to reach <laughs> <laughs> have you gone to the golf episode yet no um i did see the hotel <laughs> episode based off of uh the luck that one of um one of the characters has and donald has like the most unfortunate luck and it becomes such a huge punchline at the end against the <laughs> villain and i was laughing my ass off it's like okay so donald won oh. on this one which it's a touching moment but then you know the the villain guy's like no deal is off he's now my uh <laughs> you know, he's now my slave and then they're like guys okay what are we gonna do now and scourge is like three two one steps aside <laughs> Like yeah, I can piece the deck oh. together. <laughs> you, you know who my favorite character is in this reboot? How? Oh, who? Glom Gold. I just love him so. Oh God, much. no! They, they 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 made him such a joke of a character. Like I was... know he's just overly yeah, no. obsessed with showing up Scrooge to the nth degree. He will go to no end to show up Scrooge. <laughs> I love the, the the one episode. Um, I for, I forgot what the dude's name is, but he uh he's owning some kind of popular uh, company, and the whole time he's actually like he's a fraud. And he met it like he has no problem with this whatsoever. And this questions uh, the the two nephews who were part of it. Oh, was and that the just... Steve Jobs episode? Yeah, I think it was the Steve yeah. Jobs episode. And then right, Mark B. Yeah, yeah, right Mark near B. the end, he gets knocked over the freaking ledge, and he lands on a trampoline. But the part that gets me is that fucking like Scrooge is sitting right next to Glomp, and Glomp has got this big epic speech before he gets to the presentation. And I wouldn't blame Scrooge for falling asleep there, but having like, we're gonna have sharks in the pool. <laughs> That'll make him want to jump off the boot and unexpectedly <laughs> into the lava. And it's like, oh my God, dude. This series, I can't really think of a bad episode that I've seen in this series. So I'm not far. Su honestly. I am not surprised because, like, before the series aired, I remember hearing word that the people behind that one were also behind Gravity Falls, and Gravity Falls had a very good reception. Oh yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. so it's like, okay, so this has some people who I can actually trust. And unlike the other, you know, Disney sequels, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, it kind of makes sense that DuckTales is getting a reboot. Because, let's face it, as much as I love the original DuckTales, it does have a bit of an aging issue, and a part of which yeah. has to do with the stereotyping of Saturday morning cartoons. Nowadays, they're yeah. actually taking their narratives much more seriously. I'm not... Oh, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking a crap on the old shows. I'm just saying that it does have a bit of, a, bit of an age problem, and... You know, I mean, the animation and voice acting still holds up. It's just, yes, like, Webby was just, like, the stereotypical girl character and stuff. Oh, yeah, no, like, oh, God, I really love Webby in this new one. I know, she's so, like, quirky. I love her. Yeah, she's such an odd person. Like, she, like most, like, <laughs> the one where they're in the, the, I forgot what the place is called, but there's, like, a ball pit. 
and just the way she reacts to everything like she's not used to just like the outside world she was accustomed to just like you know training and being you know this this badass of like you know karate shit but she's so like she's still a kid she's like oh well what does this do and such um and i fun zone's fun zone yeah and i love i love how it was just like a huge payoff near the end of the episode where uh the leader of the beagle uh the 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 mother of the uh, the bugle boys beagle boys beagle boys um like she is lured into the ball pit and it's like oh god i'm sinking and she uses the hook to get herself out again <laughs> and then uses a net to trap her i'm like oh my god webby you are best webby thus far compared to you know the the uh the the, the 80s version yeah i mean like scrooge is still like pretty much the same scrooge he was in the old one that i'd say he's just a little bit more um like they actually show that he's been through all this for years and stuff. Oh, yeah, no, like, I, like yeah. I'm not surprised they changed, like, I'm not surprised that his character is kind of the same thing, but it seems kind of appropriate to do that, but also show that he was, he was an experienced explorer. The guy is, like, immortal or some shit. <laughs> he's a Disney character. Mickey Mouse has no. been around since 1928. Have you gone to the, uh, the one with his ex-girlfriend yet? No, I have not. Okay, yeah, I'll just wait until that episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I love how they're introducing all these old aspects from the Disney afternoon in the show. It's like, oh, I can't wait to see what they do with all this. Voice, the latest that I've epi uh, the latest episode I watched is when they're hiking up in the mountains. And that was like episode 10 or something like that. It's still the first season. <laughs> um. Oh, Jesse has a good question. Um, here's a thought. If the Mario Brothers cartoon had a reboot, would you try watching it? Sure. You know, as long as, you know, they know what they're doing. Because when it came to the one from Dick Entertainment... Oh, God. They just had a bunch of weird shit. Like, yeah, let's just throw some weird shit in there because the show... Nobody because the game itself is weird. It's like, well, that's not really an excuse. You could put something structurally, <laughs> you know, coherent at least. But whatever. I mean... I... <sighs> It's kind of hard to do that with Mario characters in general, I think, because they're kind of really just one-note characters most of the time. And I, I think that they could do more than that. You know, they can take yeah. some liberties. Um, like, like I, I do like how they've been giving more characters who are one-note characters and other reboots, like these actual personalities and shit. Yeah, because you know, to me, that that's a much better approach. You know, if you're doing an iteration of some kind, you know, you you are going to have to take some liberties, otherwise. There's going to be no point to, you know, giving a treatment to a different medium. Um, yeah, and I love how they brought Donald into it because it's like the old comics that the whole series. Is oh, yeah, off. no, Donald himself, like, I always see Donald the same way as usual, you know, just having. <laughs> yeah, and just having his goddamn tantrums. <laughs> but and he's they're... like so mellow and just like really exhausted because he has to raise these three boys and shit, and he's been on oh, really yeah, no. those before. I will say this, uh, the pilot episode, I had a hard time understanding Donald at first. Like, there were some lines that I remember, like, uh, there's, <laughs> Huey, Dewey, Huey, meets Good McDuck. Now remember, no, uh, no trouble. <laughs> yes, Uncle Donald, I wasn't talking to you. Oof! Oh, I know, that was like, such a good line. <laughs> it was so unexpected from Donald, too, of all people. Like, he would be more upfront instead of, like, that sarcastic asshole he was in that episode. I like it. I like what they're doing with Donald in this series. <laughs> Actually, I watched one YouTube video of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show where Luigi is voiced at when it was replaced with Duke Nukem. Huh. Luigi was voiced by... Oh, yeah, he was voiced by... Uh, hmm. I can't remember his... John St. John? I think his name is. Paul... Is it John St. John? The voice of Duke Nukem. Because sometimes my ears are fucked up when Donald is speaking because I don't understand. No, J12, that's that's literally what we were talking about not too long ago. I had trouble understanding Donald at first. And then things, like, I kind of understood him a little bit better. Um, it, it, the funny thing is they do acknowledge that. <laughs> 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 that people do have a hard, hard time understanding him. <laughs> So yeah, um, I've been watching that, and I've also been watching Lion Guard, in which I can already tell some people are going to cringe really hard, because a lot of people don't like that show. Uh, I'd say it got good, like, really later on, when they introduced a certain character. 
Well, okay, I will tell you this much. I'm still watching the first season. Um, I started to get more invested around episode 12, I think. Basically, it's when Kion has to lead a group of animals to a much more safer area. It kind of turned into like this, not Noah's Ark, but some kind of Ten Commandments sort of story. And halfway through, there's a zebra who's pregnant. So they're like, oh, shit. Now we have to protect them from the hyenas. And that was actually interesting. Like, they go as far as to have somebody who's pregnant in a show in for toddlers. I'm like, wow. Okay, now things are starting to get interesting. Yeah, like, I am always kind of surprised about what they actually show off on television nowadays. Yeah, like, there was also one episode where uh, there were two alligators fighting each other. And I'm sitting there thinking, are you sure this is for Disney Junior? This is something that should go on Disney XD or something. Yeah, it's, I am surprised what they've been doing with Guard. The thing is, there's always a bit of that uncanny valley, though, when you realize that the models are 3D models just looking 2D. Oh, yeah, no, I've heard a lot about that. No, my issue is with the characters and the narrative. Like, even even though I find the series to be okay at most, I still utterly despise the pilot movie. I... Like Return of the I, World I, got me so pissed off when I first saw it. I don't like Bunga. Bunga is such. Oh a yeah, no. Like even me. like okay, I'll tell you this much. There was an episode where, um. Okay, so there was this there was this big open gap where, freaking uh, Simba gets stuck down there and Bunga stuck down there. And they have to find another way around. Like, they're entering the caves, and then he starts singing Akuta Matata, and they start grouping together, and there's, like, a much better sense of appreciation of the two. Even then, <laughs> Bunga, I'm still, like, I'm being very cautious with this kid, because they just, they try to make him this comic relief, and they rely on so many stinky jokes, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, okay, I know that this is aimed for toddlers, but you're kind of going too far. I know nobody who actually likes uh bunga oh yeah no bunga I, is just like oh god i think like I, if i remember correctly like ninja was like really upset with bunga he absolutely hated bunga you mean british ninja yeah oh I mean, yeah no i don't blame them because just he's that one character who just okay this it does it does go on a bit of a uh like a bit of a tirade but his sukazama song in the pilot it just felt like a giant middle finger to Hakuna Matata. Like, Hakuna Matata is my least favorite song in the movie, but I have, like I respect it for its uplifting nature, especially after the stampede scene. And it's become, like, a huge impact throughout the 90s that people love to sing that song. And then mm -hmm. you hear this one saying, oh, Hakuna Matata? Nah, it's all about Tsukazama. You little shit. You little fucking shit. And then he goes on to yeah. sing about it. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. No, no, it's no. It's like... It's like with me how they're replacing the Jurassic Park ride with the Jurassic World ride at Universal Studios. It just feels. Uh, like, no. it, it feels wrong, and I and I and I, no. Uh, I mean, no. I saw a footage from the new version of the Jurassic World ride. It actually looks kind of good, but still, it feels like a piece of history has been lost. Uh, just okay. It, it's like it's when just... they I heard that they shut down the Jaws ride in Universal Orlando. I I've been to or uh. Universal uh, Hollywood. Yeah, Universal Studios Hollywood. Like, I've been there once. The ride was pretty fun. Um, it's not my favorite ride. Uh, the one I seem to kind of enjoy, like, the ones that I seem to have an impact of was the Mummy ride, that Transformers ride, and um, it was a replacement ride of the Back to the Future one, but... Um, yeah, I remember going on those it, yeah, rides last they, year. It became the Simpsons them. ride. So, like, this the was... Simpsons ride wasn't bad my problem with the universal rides is that it's all these ones where you're just in front of a screen and that doesn't really give me the same like satisfaction of being like on an actual ride mm -hmm. and, i mean some of them were fun like i guess the transformers one could be fun at times and the the harry potter one holy crap that one's actually really a lot of that fun. one i've heard a lot about and i still have yet to check it out if it's like the the thing about the Universal Orlando or not Universal Ho Hollywood, in Hollywood you can pretty much get through all the rides in one day if you go on the right day. It, it's like I've literally done every ride at Universal Universal uh, Hollywood when I was dating. Uh, you know, <laughs> Mib Alien Attack still kicks ass after all these years. You know, I've heard about the recent Mib entry and that it's not very good. 
And it kind of upsets me because they did have a pretty good cast. They had Chris Hemsworth and the actress from um, Thor Ragnarok. Sorry, I was responding to something. Sorry, what would you say? No, I was um, I was referring <laughs> to um, because uh, there apparently there was an attraction based off of Men in Black. Tessa Thompson, that's what it was. Oh, yeah, Tessa Thompson. Yeah, because they had a recent entry of Men in Black, and it didn't do very well. And I'm sitting there thinking, like... Oh. Yeah, didn't that, like, bomb at the box office? It not only bombed, it had some viciously negative reviews. Like, it had, like, a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm like, ouch! Ooh. Like, you have a good casting choice. You have Tessa Ooh. Thompson and Chris Hemsworth, two people from Thor Ragnarok. How do you fuck that up? It's kind of like... It seems like every Men in Black film honestly go goes down in quality from one. Like Doesn't one was really me. good. Two was okay. I like parts of two. Three was, I, I guess it had some funny moments. The first one. I'm not I hearing. A... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, just, I'm not hearing much about this movie, so I, I don't know what to think of this one. That's the thing, I haven't heard anything about this film. Not that it's bad, or not that it's good, but nothing. So that's that's an even worse fate, I would think. Ouch. Yeah. Because it's like uh, with Ghostbusters 2016, I found that film to be just overall meh. Oh, God, no. I've heard so many people have issues with that one. Like, I'm not talking about, like, when it was, like, coming out to theaters. I'm talking about, like, after the release. I, it, when, they be, when everybody was, like, saying it was sexist not to see it and stuff like that. I went to go see it. Because I wanted to make my own judgment, and I just found the whole thing meh. Not particularly good, but not really particularly bad. It was just really... It's just there. Not very, not very memorable. Just not very memorable at all, and that's probably a worse fate for it, honestly. Mm. And then I've been hearing that there's going to be like a legit Ghostbusters 3 next year. Oh yeah, it is coming out next year. I, I saw it? a like I saw a supposed teaser. I don't know if it's an official one or not, but they show the back of the um, the, the Ghostbusters car. Yeah. I forgot what the name of the car was, but it's like inside a barn, and then it says summer 2020. I'm like, I hope this is legit. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, no, wait. There is one thing that from Ghostbusters 2016 that I liked, and that's the uh, what they did for the uh, remaster of the song. Oh, yeah. Like, if you just want to hear that, just watch the trailer. So, oof. Let me see if I can actually find that song now that I think about it. Also, don't mind me eating. Um, damn, it's been almost 30 minutes. I better get started. I, I think I've got enough of a crowd. I'm going to go ahead and transition over and uh, get started. So, yeah. <laughs> 